Today, we are going to do something completely original that no one has ever done. A video where we look at the best Overwatch League player at every hero in Overwatch 1. Overwatch 2 is for another day. If you've seen a video about this topic previously, you were on a mushroom trip, it's fine, don't worry. Today is the first time anyone has done this. Completely original content. It might be difficult only having one player per hero, considering choices like Torb, Symmetra, and Doom were not played in Overwatch League very often, so those choices are up in the air, but I tried my best to pick one player per character, so apologies for the overlaps throughout. We're gonna start with tanks, so hold on to your butts. Sigma is a hero who came in late 2019 during roll lock, brokenly overpowered during release, but the man who really took Bigma to the next level is obviously Choi Hyobin. Arguably the best off tank player of all time. Honestly, you only have two choices, that being Choi or Void, so you need to pick one. 2020 is where Sigma was most prevalent, and Double Shield was almost always played. Choi always had top level performances, putting out sickening amounts of damage, accretions were always on point, perfect positioning, and winning two championships on the same hero, getting finals MVP for one of those championships. Like, can you really argue with that? Choi was barely ever subbed out during 2020, having plentiful amounts of success, and he truly earned both of his rings on his signature pick. The guy is an animal, simple and straightforward, the Sigma Goat. D.Va was probably the most popular Overwatch 1 tank. It was played in so many different team comps, a very high skill ceiling, and no one did it better than Void in my eyes. He was actually zero mistakes to player on D.Va. This guy was always in the right place at the right time, peeling on supports was always top tier, and a pivotal reason to why Shanghai won in 2021. That team was disgusting. Izayaki Zen was practically unkillable due to the peel from Lee Jae Gon and Void. This cockroach ass team comp was leaps and bounds better than every other team. Plus, in 2020, when Void broke out the D.Va, it was much of the same, always playing as close to perfect as you'd expect from your off tank. When Void was on Glads, he wasn't the best during GOATS, not bad by any means, but Shanghai Dragon's Void was a completely different beast and truly came into form, again, arguably being the best off tank player right next to Choyobin. Zarya is one we will make quick considering the societal punishment for mentioning this Overwatch League character. Throughout Overwatch 1, I feel it's undeniably Sinatra. He was by far the best Zarya player. Goats was when Zarya was most prevalent. Getting two grabs in under a minute is all I'm going to say. Regardless of your opinions on Sinatra, you can't pretend the impact did not happen during that year, but let us move on. Roadhog is an interesting one, not being meta throughout Overwatch professional play really ever. Hog was at his most dominant in 2020 playoffs, actually being broken as hell, and shocking me a lot was actually Gesture. A part of the longest duo in Overwatch history, the Prophet Gesture Classic, they've always been known for that Tracer Winston play. Throughout watching the 2020 playoff matches, it was genuinely crazy to see Gesture being arguably the best player on his team. But his Roadhog was a massive contributor to why Soul even made it to the Grand Finals. Of course, Super won playing this hero, but in my eyes, I don't feel Super was the sole reason Shock won Grand Finals. 2020 Shock was just a stupid team. Gesture was actually putting carry performances on Roadhog so this team could make it this far. Of course, Prophet was here doing great on Ash and Hanzo, but Gesture was really going bananas here. It was truly an interesting time to be a Gesture fan until 2021 came around where he fell off and performed terribly. At the end of the day though, Gesture was laughing his way to the bank doing burnouts in his Lamborghini, so who was anyone else to talk? Next is Wrecking Ball, and people may get angry, no it's not Among. As much as he is the silly man who always played the hero and was fun to watch, I don't think it's realistic to say Among is truly the best ball. If that was the case when Ball was most prevalent, Gaga wouldn't have been playing over him on Chengdu in 2021. I think Fate deserves to be the man of the hour here. Shanghai Dragon started to have a massive glow up when Fate showed everyone that he can ball. Initially in 2021, they were not a dominant powerhouse. The adaptations were made, Fate became more comfortable, aiding and forcing this ball comp to become meta in the back half of that year. Coordination between Fleta and Fate was always fantastic. Dive timing was perfect to consistently win matches. No one could beat Shanghai on this comp. 
hence their dominant grand finals victory. Saying fate is the best ball in Overwatch 1 is not crazy. What was crazy is how everyone was saying fate is a top 3 tank player of all time. He was a good player, but aside from Ball, his Orisa was good, Ryan was serviceable, but that's about it. Winston, the monkey man. Only one person deserves this spot, and it's fearless. In Overwatch 1 specifically, he had a massive redemption arc being on the 0 and 40 Shanghai Dragons, getting out of that situation, grinding back in contenders, then returning to Shanghai in 2020. His Winston play was almost unparalleled. The main highlights were his primal mechanics. Obviously, the core fundamentals Fearless put out on Winston were legendary, but the amount of value he got from every primal was just unbelievable. Juggles most would consider impossible, Fearless made them look like another day at the training range. The most absurd shit would be happening whenever you got Fearless on his comfort pick. Fearless's play was a massive contributor to Shanghai's initial turnaround season in 2020. Then joining Dallas Fuel in 2021, we got to see him release the beast and help Dallas get their first non-dog shit season. There is only one person who can compete with Fearless and that's Gushue. Both of them are unreal at Winston. For Overwatch 1 specifically, I think Fearless deserves that trophy though. The Rectangle Man. Only one person deserves Ryan's spot, the 5'2", 65-pound gaming warlord, lowercase s, Ooper. During 2019, Ryan was arguably the most important part of GOATS, dominating three-fourths of the season. Ryan matchups were very important, and Super consistently won those, aiding in shock to be as dominant as they were. He is a meme, but in seriousness, Super was actually insane at Ryan, and there's no taking away from that. Anytime Super needed to play Ryan, it was always going to be good. 2020, it was played a little bit, but Super was mainly on the bench for that season. When 2021 came around, he was still a top tier Ryan, like 100%. Granted, I think Gator was better in 2021 at Ryan play, but this doesn't take away from Super consistently being as good as he was on Ryan throughout his tenure. Especially when someone rides the bench for an entire season, no one expects you to perform as well as Super did in 2021. Orisa, one of the most boring goddamn heroes I've seen yet. One man made it easier than it already was. Smurf, the boss of the fabled callout of I'm pulling, I'm pulling. Winning the 2019 Grand Finals, playing this hero, and being a mainstay for 2020, the Choyobin Smurf tank line was insane. Double shield power was just too strong for Smurf, and that's really about it. I'm mainly going off of results because Orisa was a tank that relies more on the intangibles. Not much skill expression for Overwatch 1 Orisa. Smurf just wins. Now we are going to move on to DPS heroes, starting with Ash. I'm going to toss a curveball in with this one, giving the Ash play to Kai or KSP as he was known during 2020. Ash Mercy was played a lot, and I feel Kai was a massive contributor to why Valiant was a top 5 team in 2020. Everyone is always talking about Ons, and rightfully so, but Kai was right next to him statistically. He just wouldn't miss and won fights for his team on a regular basis. If you took Kai off the Valiant in 2020, I don't even think the team would be top 5. That's how impactful he was on an individual level. It was a true joy to watch this robotic super soldier play Ash. In 2021, Kai played Cassidy for the most part on Atlanta, but when he broke out the Ash, it was a joy to see him click heads on it, always given that 2020 vibe of insanity. Bastion was a weird one, considering how this hero was just never really played in Overwatch 1. The pirate ship in 2018 was most likely the only time I can even remember, but what I can remember even more than that is Architect on the Chandelier in 2019 Grand Finals. He sat there and he killed a bunch of people and uh, yep. When it comes to Cassidy in Overwatch 1, there's a lot of great ones. As we said with Kai, you have Lip and Friends. 2020 is where I would say Cassidy was most prevalent and Exe was a high standing MVP candidate playing this hero. He was outputting insane amounts of damage, never missing, consistently being at the top of standings throughout the entire year on this character. When it came to Paris in 2020, everyone and their cat was always talking about Sparkle, when I feel Exe was a massive reason to why Paris was so successful. It was their best season to date, and aside from the Summer Showdown, that was obviously the Sparkle show, Exe was the one in the front lines killing everybody. 
Doomfist is a similar pick to Bastion. He was only prevalent at one point in time, that being the 2019 playoffs. And funnily enough, I don't think during 2019 any of the Overwatch League players were the best. Who Are You and Sparkle and Contenders outperformed all of them. But since we need to look at Overwatch League players, maybe give it to Sparkle because when he did break out the Doom in Overwatch League for the few times, it was mechanically crazy. But nothing anyone should look too hard into because Doom was mainly played with that Hackfist comp in Contenders, which Sparkle was the progenitor for. On the other hand, you have Shock, who also won with Sinatra playing Doom, so you could also say him. Young Jin on 2019 Shanghai Dragons was also really good at Doom, but for the sake of simplicity, Sparkle can win due to his aid in creating the Hackfist comp. Echo is going to be a really easy one. It's Fleta. When a player wins MVP using said hero, what else can you really say? Obviously, people have surpassed him since 2020. Pelican is probably the best Echo in the world currently. But Echo and Tracer were Fleta's comfort picks, which he won MVP on and always had great performances. Throughout 2020, he laid it down on the nerds, always being in the right position for easy executions. In 2021, Echo had a stint of being meta where once again, Fleta was really good. We can also thank Fleta for his performances since everyone got the best Echo skin out of it. So thank you Fleta for shoving people into lockers. Genji is a weird one for Overwatch 1. Obviously, in 2024, we know now Who Are You is the big boss. He's the best Genji of all time. No one holds a candle to the boy. But in this game, he wasn't really playing that much. He was constantly riding the bench. So Sparkle had to come in, showing everyone how it's done. Sparkle's performance in 2020 Summer Showdown as a rookie player was unfathomable. The peak of Sparkle Genji was a sight to behold. He was working everyone in the neutral. Understanding the limitations on this hero was second to nobody. During this tournament, Genji was obviously really strong, but he gave an eye-opening viewing experience to everyone. EQO also deserves a shout out if you just want to look at the 2020 Summer Showdown. He does have the best Genji clip of all time, so... Need to find an opening. Sparkle now moving through, but X is on the flank. The headshot onto Carpe. One of their star players taken out early. And Boombox just left to his own devices in the sidelines. He goes down to Fusion. Only a couple of players left remaining. EQO's got to come up huge right now. Everyone is weak. EQO with the blade. Pulls it through. Builds it up. Will it be enough? One kill, two kill. Are you kidding me? EQO now finds it with the what? third. And now it is overtime. XE moving over to the Tracer to try and deny. But EQO, EQO. What? But during and after this tournament, Sparkle always had the performances to back up his status as the best Genji. Hanzo was at his strongest during 2018 playoffs after the Storm Arrow was introduced replacing his Scatter Arrow, thank Christ. Of course, the world was not free of Hanzo being annoying because Storm Arrow was also broken as hell during release where Prophet rained Hellfire on everyone. His Hanzo was insane in a big part of giving Fusion their first ever second place, one of many. Initially, London Spitfire wasn't good at this meta and were internally booming. Eventually, they pulled it together in getting that championship on the back of Prophet's performances. He was top tier, consistently putting out the Hanzo differential. People like Custa know from experience what it feels like to be spread wide open by the Prophet Hanzo. Next up is The Rat, only having a stint in 2018 where Jacob Lyon made a name for himself. The first and only time until around three years later where Houston actually looked like a good team. He would give his opponents true bitch-like tactics with a tire usage and playing like an absolute jackass, but it actually worked. I mean, granted, you need to play junk this way. Regardless of that, it was entertaining to watch. Houston had a lot of success on the back of the Jake Rat, and after this time, Junk was never really played, and as you can tell, some of these heroes are tough considering lots of them just didn't really get played too much, hence why I needed to go back 300 years to find anything worth a damn for Junkrat. Congratulations, Jake. You've done it. You are the best Overwatch 1 Junkrat. You truly earned it. May was a hero that was played a ton in 2020, and I'm going to toss in another curveball here. Philly Fusion's very own Ivy on May was a game changer. 
Whenever this team wanted to play a rush style, Ivy came in to play May, and he always had the best wall placements to ensure team fight wins on top of having excellent mechanical skill with her projectiles. When you're playing rush, May is imperative to making sure that team comp works, and Philly played around it more than well enough to earn number one seed in 2020. There may be people who say that Pelican is deserving of Overwatch 1's best May from 2021 since Atlanta primarily played rush there, which might make some sense but I feel like Pelican's success mainly came from his Echo play rather than May. Sadly, Ivy never had any success outside of 2020, but at least he will be remembered for his May play on Philadelphia Fusion. Next is Farah, and nothing else is more synonymous with her than Jinmu. Ding was also fantastic, Fleta was insane, but Jinmu always came in and wreaked havoc on people with Farah. In 2021, Jinmu played a lot of this hero, being absolutely insane at it. The first time Chengdu was actually good, it allowed for Jinmu's power to be shown throughout the world. Leave and Jinmu were actually a great DPS line since Leave just existed and Jinmu could play Farah, leading them to multiple stage finals on the back of their play. You could honestly say that Jinmu is the best silly hero specialist of all time. Stupid heroes like Farah and Doomfist he was shockingly good at, but when it comes to Farah specifically, I don't think anyone did it better than him. Reaper is yet again one of those heroes where it doesn't really matter who you put here considering there isn't really much skill expression with this character, but if I had to put anyone here, Striker would definitely be the guy winning a grand finals while playing it for Shock in 2019, and people consider this to be his best hero as the years went by. When he wasn't throwing keyboards and getting in Nero's face telling him he's going to suplex his mom into a bed of nails, he's annihilating people in the server with Reaper. What a beast. Soldier 76 is a tough ask considering he wasn't really ever played in Overwatch League outside of maybe Season 1. The Legs was typically a get back to the point in OT kind of guy. You can put a bird ring here, maybe an AKM if you really wanted to show appreciation to his 3 minute and 45 second Genji Blade and make him look good at something. Overwatch League Season 5 Stage 1 was the most prevalent soldier ever was, but that was Overwatch 2 and we can't talk about that game right now, so bird ring wins. Sombra is lip and there's nothing else to be added to that. All I can say to you is this, pick any POV for Lip on Shanghai Dragons and just look at his tracking. It looks like he's cheating. The EMP generation was infinite, he had it almost every fight, his understanding of Sombra's limitations were second to none. How anyone can put out performances of this magnitude on Sombra is incomprehensible to me. During Shanghai's championship run, the Tracer Sombra dive was just unstoppable. They could not lose on this team comp. Like, Lip Sombra was stupid, right? We've all seen it, we all know, and there's no arguments. Symmetra is a hero that's really hard to gauge value from, considering her impact resides in team play rather than mechanical skill. Sparkle once again takes the place for this hero, mainly due to the Dallas Fuel's May Melee run in 2021. This team almost missed out on the tournament, randomly switching to this rush comp where they just kept TPing around, throwing teams off guard, and inevitably winning that stage all on the back of coordination with Sparkle's TP usage and obviously mechanical skill from everyone else. They played Sim everywhere rather than her just being a control strat, and this is when Dallas Fuel actually became a team that was good for once, and fans just enjoyed seeing their strategies with the teleports. But after her stint here, Sim was never really used outside of a specific map strategy. Torb, our favorite 3-1 muscle man, again, not really played throughout the history of Overwatch League, but it's easy to who deserves the Torb trophy. It's Carpe. His Torb is actually really good, surprisingly, being pulled out from time to time in 2020 during his initial MVP campaign early on in that season. Philly's strategies with Torb had a lot of success, or lots of success relative to how much it was used, I should say. And Carpe also became the first player in Overwatch League to reach 4,000 final blows while playing this hero against Paris Eternal. It's a shame more people didn't pull out Torb in Overwatch League, and unfortunately, it's all too late for anyone to do that now. Tracer is a really hard hero to pick. There has been so many disgusting Tracer players throughout history. Sabiobi, Prophet, Fleta, Striker, Lip, Shax, Kevster. But I think the person who deserves Overwatch 1's Kingpin Tracer trophy is Leave. Chengdu Hunter's very own secret weapon, their ultimate strategy was just Leave wins the game for us or we don't win at all. Unless Jinmu is playing Farah, of course. But even still, Leave was the primary focus of confusion. 
How he was pulling off what he was doing with such little resources is unfathomable. He wasn't on a Shanghai Dragons, Atlanta Reign, or Dallas Fuel. Like, the guy won MVP primarily playing Tracer and truly making a name for himself putting out one of the best Tracer performances of all time consistently. I don't think he ever had a bad game in 2021, and I think Leave deserves to be called the best for that alone. Genuinely unreal how much value he got against every team. Regardless of his opponent, doesn't matter what their skill level is, Leave was always better, trying his best to carry his team to victory. Widow as the final DPS, and there's plenty of greats in Overwatch League history, but you're wrong if you don't say Anz was the best in Overwatch 1. He came out of left field, a random signing, scouted by Dusty Krusty, comes in and destroys everyone. We have never seen a performance of this magnitude on Widow before or after Anz in 2020. In my eyes, it's the most explosive and impressive rookie performance of all time, even more so than proper. Anz had no expectations at all. No one hyped him up. He came in to kill, won Overwatch League on the back of his hitscan heroes, and then retired like a demon. He would almost always get first pick, letting Shock go into most fights 6v5, but I don't know what kind of Adderall he was on, what happened behind the scenes, but his peak Widow play was just entirely unmatched. We are now going into the support category, starting with Ana. This one is a hotly contested hero. There's so many good Ana players, but during Overwatch 1, Alarm was the best in my opinion. Probably the most clutch flex support player I've ever seen, and the most gifted Overwatch support player of all time, as a matter of fact. Every hero Alarm played, he was really damn good at, but Ana was by far his best. Starting in 2020, the Rampage began consistently being a top tier player during his rookie year. This guy was better than most people who already had tenures. When it came to 2021 Fusion, they weren't as good as their previous year, but Alarm was still pumping out fantastic performances on the daily, clearly being the best player on Fusion. When people are saying someone is better than Violet at flex support year one, you know the kid is gross. And as we all know, Alarm did pass away right before 2022 season, so rest in peace to the GOAT. If he had more time, Alarm probably could have taken the spot for best at every flex support hero. Baptiste is a classic hero everyone wants to put into a headlock and beat the piss out of, mainly due to Immortality Field and his damage output, but Shu brought this to a whole new level. Throughout 2021, he was a keyboard warrior on this hero, and of course Shu showed good performances on Guangzhou prior to 2021. They had a good season there, but Gladiators is where he truly came into form, starting to build the legacy we all know him for. Anyone could go on and on about Shu's prowess playing Baptiste, but sometimes videos speak louder than words ever could. The big moment encapsulates why Shu is Overwatch 1's best Baptiste. Shu comes out with the clutch ultimate, and he's no stranger to it. He loves to just pump out these ultimates to try and turn these team fights at a completely different angles when teams aren't expecting it. But to salvage it then and there, potentially game winning. That could have been the title winning play from Shu. If Shu didn't pull this play off, Chengdu would have won the Countdown Cup. And years later, he'd obviously become one of the best flex support players on Earth. 2021, he started solidifying himself as one of the best flex supports in the game, but little did we know, he would get even better. Brig to some ruined Overwatch, she is a very dirty character, but I wanted to highlight an unexpected player who brought this hero to a whole new level, Skewed. During 2021 signings, no one knew what to make of him when he got picked up for Glads, a traditional flex support player. He came in and was just leaps and bounds better than everyone individually at Brig. This guy was benching Moth on Brig, and we all know how good of a main support player Moth was. Skewed came completely out of left field and ended up being one of the best, and it's nothing to scoff at. Truly inspirational gameplay. The Shu skewed backline was Lee Jae Gon Izayaki level in 2021, and I'd say it's the only backline who actually competed with them that year. The kid was just a freak on Brig. For Lucio, only one person deserves this, and that's Moth. All throughout GOATS, Moth was by far the best Lucio player, mechanically unparalleled, always in the right position, beat timing was always perfect, understanding win conditions like no other Lucio throughout Overwatch 1, he rarely ever made mistakes, and there's a reason people have Moth as the best overall main support player during this era. Anything you put him on, he was better than most. 
And when it comes to Lucio specifically, 2020 exacerbates how good he was. Post roll queue, he would put out DPS level performances regularly. If you want to see how Lucio was meant to be played, just pick a random match from Shock in 2019 and 2020, then witness true glory. Mercy, a hero who was only played during specific metas, the Moth meta in 2018, not named after the player by the way, and 2020 because Mercy Pocket Ash was just broken as hell, and then I guess in 2021 the Farah Mercy combo was really prevalent, but the player formerly known as Yiviltal, now known as Xerneas, found out a trick. He has a gun to show other Mercies who the real man was. His use of Mercy Tech was always fantastic alongside the ability of consistently knowing when his opportunities to go aggressive was, and the way Xerneas played was so aggressive and enjoyable to watch while also being exceptional fundamentally. If anyone is an aspiring Mercy Grinder, his POVs are a great learning tool. Moira obviously falls under that category of little to no skill expression, so gauging who is the best becomes quite difficult. Fielder would probably be the best shout considering Dallas would always pull out the Lucio Moira team comps. June Joust 2021, they were the progenitors for what is coined as the zombie comp. If this team could play Lucio Moira, they will, and that's really all there is to say about this character. Our final hero is Zenyatta, who obviously belongs to Violet. Played it all throughout GOATS, and even post GOATS, he was always the best Zen in the lobby. I think the only person who ever competed with Violet was Alarm when it came to performances in-game. This guy was just always a third DPS for Shock, annihilating everyone. I really miss watching him play Zen, and sadly Violet might as well be a main support player currently. We rarely ever get to see him play any of his signature heroes, but hopefully on FTG he will actually play the hero at least once. And that is the best Overwatch League player for the Overwatch 1 era at every hero. Sadly, trying to find a person to fit the bill in certain instances was difficult. Doom, Torb, or Sim, they were just never prevalent enough for people to express themselves, or others like Moira and Reaper that have such low skill expression, it doesn't really matter who you put in that spot. If you have a list of your own or something you'd like to change about mine, granted the comment would be a perfect opportunity to troll someone, just make a large box of empty space and punish someone for pressing view more. Regardless, make sure to leave a comment about your thoughts below. Thank you so much for watching to the end and be sure to subscribe for more Overwatch related content. If you're interested, make sure to check out my last video on Overwatch's most gifted support player. He's a truly amazing prospect and also a very sad tale at the same vein.